वी आर गोइंग टू सी वट इज द कॉम्प्लेक्स इंटीग्रेशन जस्ट लाइक लाइन इंटीग्रेशन देर आर सम थियरम्स ऑन दी कॉम्प्लेक्स इंटीग्रेशन सो लेट स्टार्ट नाउ डिफाइन दी कॉम्प्लेक्स इंटीग्रेशन दैट इज द लाइन इंटीग्रल द लाइन इंटीग्रल इज डिनोटेड बाय इंटीग्रेशन ओवर सी एफ ऑफ जेड डी जेड सेंस जेड इक्वल टू एक्स प्लस आई वन एंड वट इज डी जेड देन इफ वी टेक डी जेड फ्रॉम दिस सो विल गेट डी जेड इक्वल टू डी एक्स प्लस आई डी वाई एंड एफ ऑफ जेड इक्वल टू दैट यू नो यू प्लस आई वी देन दिस लाइन इंटीग्रल बिकम्स इंटीग्रेशन ओवर सी एफ ऑफ जेड डी जेड इक्वल टू यू पुट दिस एफ ऑफ जेड एज यू प्लस आई वी एंड दिस डी जेड एज डी एक्स प्लस आई डी वाई इफ वी मल्टीप्लाई दिस वन सो यू कंसिडर द रियल एंड इमेजनरी पार्ट सेपरेट हाउ यू डी एक्स प्लस आई यू डी वाई प्लस आई वी डी एक्स and i into i minus v dy so take a real part u dx minus v dy and the imaginary part u dy plus v dx you will get this integration so it is known as line integral this shows that the evaluation of the line integral of a complex function can be reduced to the evaluation of two line integrals of real functions note that the values of integral are different along different paths second the line integration depends on not only terminal points but also the paths joining the points for example if p and q are two different points so if we join this this is one path this may second path one can consider path like this one can consider path like this so line integration depends not only the terminal points not only p and q it depends on paths of joining the points and that is why the values of integral are different along different path that you must remember if f of z is analytic in the region r then integration over c f of z dz is independent of path joining z1 z2 in the region r if f of z is analytic then only this integration over c f of z dz is independent of path joining z1 z2 in the region r what is the meaning of this if it is not analytic then the integral values are different along different path but if we function is analytic then this value is independent of path now consider one example on line integral that evaluate integration 0 to 1 plus i x minus y plus i x square dz so there are three path that is along the straight line from z equal to 0 to z equal to 1 plus i along the real axis from z equal to 0 to z equal to 1 and then along the line parallel to imaginary axis z equal to 1 to z equal to 1 plus i third path is along the imaginary axis from z equal to 0 to z equal to i and then along the line parallel to real axis from z equal to i to z equal to 1 plus i so here solution this integral i will denote by i integration 0 to 1 plus i x minus y plus i x square dz note that what is a z z equal to x plus i y this implies that what is a dz it is equal to dx plus i dy so i equal to integration 0 to 1 plus i x minus y plus i x square into dz means it is a dx plus i dy so this is equation number 1 now first path you take that is along the straight line from z equal to 0 to z equal to 1 plus i straight line if we draw the straight line so let's see here the graph x axis y axis here z equal to 0 means 0 0 and z equal to 1 plus i so if we consider this is the o point and 1 plus i means this point it is 1 plus i means along x axis x 1 and y axis 1 so i am getting this one if we consider this point is a and join this 0 to a so straight line so what is the equation of this line note that this is a your x value this is your y value means this point is what your 1 comma 0 so what is the equation of this line so you just see there if you don't know how to find equation of this point if we have two points then it is a x minus x1 upon x2 minus x1 that is equal to y minus y1 upon y2 minus y1 
by this you can find out first is x1 y1 is 0 0 and x2 y2 is 1 comma 1 because 1 plus i what is the real part 1 the imaginary part is 1 by using this you will get the equation as y equal to x because it is a standard 0 0 1 1 like that point so it is a standard line it is y equal to x so it is a straight line y equal to x so what is value of dy dy equal to dx so you convert this integral 1 in single variable that y replaced by x and dy replaced by dx and therefore I am getting i equal to x minus y means what x plus i x square bracket close dx plus i dy means dx. So what about the values? So here limits are 0 to 1 plus i. So here values of x so from 0 to 1 how that is o to a 0 to 1. So now simplify this. So i equal to integration 0 to 1. This x and x get cancelled. I am getting here i x square into dx common 1 plus i into dx. So this i and 1 plus i you take outside inside 0 to 1 x square dx. So simplify this. It is a i minus 1 because if we multiply i inside, I am getting i minus 1 and here integration is x cube by 3 0 to 1. So, i minus 1 upper limit minus lower limit. So, upper limit is 1. So, 1 by 3 minus 0. So, i equal to it is 1 by 3 i minus 1. The same thing I can write it as 1 by 3 minus 1 plus i. So, along the first path this is your integral value. Now, along the second path that is along the real axis from z equal to 0 to z equal to 1 and then along the line parallel to imaginary axis from z equal to 1 to z equal to 1 plus i. Draw the figure. So, here x axis, y axis, here o, o point means 0, 0, here z equal to 1 means here real part that is 1. So, here if we consider this point is b, so it is 1 comma 0 and z equal to 1 plus i means 1 1 point so I am getting here. So, if we denote this as a 1 1 point that is a z equal to 1 plus i. So, path is what? 0 to b and b to a. Note that z equal to 0 to 1, 0 to b and b to a as we have integral 1 that is the i equal to integration 0 to 1 plus i in bracket x minus y plus i x square into dx plus i dy. This is your equation 1 means line integral. So, now path is what? So, that I will split into 0 to 1 plus i. I want to find 0 to 1 plus i but path is different. So, that is why I can consider path is first ob, ob path that is x minus y plus i x square into dx plus i dy plus second path is b to a x minus y plus i x square into dx plus i dy. So, what about the path? You decide the limits of this path. So, now along ob, note that along ob, what is ob? What is the equation of ob line? Here equation of this line is y equal to 0. Right, because value of y along x axis is 0. So, it is a y equal to 0 and therefore, you will get there dy equal to 0. And what about the along ba this line? So, note that this ab line or ba line, what is the equation of this? It is a x equal to 1 line. If you are not getting direct, then you substitute the value in this equation that is equal to y minus y1 upon y2 minus y1. So, you take this first value is 0, 0 and 1, 0. You substitute these values x1, y1, this is x2, y2 similarly for the second. So, here I am getting x equal to 1. Therefore, what is the dx? Derivative of 1 is 0. So, use this first value in this integral and second value in this integral. So, what we get? We get i equal to integration. So, here in the first, I am using this part. So, what is it? It is y equal to 0, dy equal to 0. So, I am getting x minus 0 means it is a plus i x square. So, x plus i x square 
because y is 0 into dx. So, what are the limits of this OB? So, value of x is 0, value of x is 1. So, therefore, limits are 0 to 1 plus. Now, in this second, here x equal to 1 and dx equal to 0. And therefore, x is 1 minus y as it is, x is 1. So, i 1 square it is 1, bracket close, dx, dx is 0. So, 0 plus i dy. It contains only y. So, from b to a, what are the limits of y? y equal to 0, y equal to 1. Note that b to a. So, that is why limits are 0 to 1. Now, simplify this. So, i equal to integration 0 to 1, x plus i x square dx plus integration 0 to 1, 1 minus y plus i into i dy only. So, integrate it. It is a x square by 2 plus i x cube by 3. Limits are 0 to 1. Here plus i outside. The integration of 1 is 1 into y minus y square by 2 plus i into y. Again, the limits are 0 to 1. So, put upper limit minus lower limit. So, upper limit is 1. So, 1 by 2 plus i 1 by 3 minus lower limit x equal to 0. So, I am getting 0 plus i in bracket upper limit that is 1. So, 1 minus 1 by 2 plus i minus everywhere g y equal to 0. So, I am getting 0. So, simplify this. So, it is the 1 by 2 plus i 1 by 3 plus i minus 1 by 2 i i into i I am getting minus 1 i equal to. So, real part is 1 by 2 and minus 1. It is a minus half and imaginary part that is i common in bracket I am taking here I am getting here 1 by 3 plus 1 and minus half. So, what is value of this? By calculator you can find directly. So, value is 5 by 6. So, this is your integral value for the second part. Note that for the first part, value of integral is 1 by 3 minus 1 plus i and for second part, it is minus 1 by 2 plus i 5 by 6. It means that in the complex integral, the line integral value is depends on the path also. Now, along the third path. So, what is the third path that along the imaginary axis from z equal to 0 to z equal to i? And then along the line parallel to real axis from z equal to i to z equal to 1 plus i. So, draw the figure. Here x axis, here y axis, z equal to 0. So, consider the point O, 0, 0. That is z equal to 0 and z equal to i. So, here z equal to i. z equal to i means what? It is a 0, 1. Real part is 0, 1 means it is a b point here, 0, 1. And then the line parallel to real axis up to 1 plus i means 1, 1 point. If we consider 1, 1 point here, I am getting this point is supposed to be A. So, 1, 1. So, path is B to A. So, instead of this B, because in the last path we considered this point B, so you consider here C point. So, this path I want 0 to C and then C to A. As your first equation is integral I equal to integration 0 to 1 plus I x minus y plus i x square into dx plus i dy. So, here path is from O to C means O C x minus y plus i x square into dx plus i dy plus then along the line parallel to real axis from z equal to i to z equal to 1 plus i means C A x minus y plus i x square dx plus i dy. So, along OC, what is equation of OC? This is x equal to 0. So, therefore, I am getting x equal to 0. This implies that dx equal to 0 along OC and along CA. What is equation of CA? It is y equal to 1. So, y equal to 1. This implies that dy equal to 0. Again, you can find by the same formula that is x minus x1 upon x2 minus x1 equal to y minus y1 upon y2 minus y1. You can find this equation or direct because it is a straight line parallel to x axis. So, you know the equation, standard equation of x axis, y axis or any line parallel to x axis or y axis. So, substitute these values. So, OC means this value here and CA means this, these values here. 
and therefore i equal to so integral becomes x is 0 in the first o along oc x is 0 means only minus y i am getting n to dx also 0 means i dy so what are the values of y because it contains only y what are the limits of y here so along oc value of y is 0 to 1 plus along ca what is value of y equal to 1 and dy equal to 0 so therefore integrand becomes x minus 1 plus i x square and this dx there but dy is 0 so that is only dx i am getting it contains only x therefore what are the limits of x here x equal to 0 and x equal to 1 value so simplify this so that is equal to minus i outside integration 0 to 1 y dy plus integration 0 to 1 it is a x minus 1 plus i x square into dx so integrate it so minus i so it is a y square by 2 with respect to y limits are 0 to 1 plus here integration of this is x square by 2 minus x plus i x cube by 3 0 to 1 so upper limit minus lower limit it is a minus i by 2 outside upper limit is 1 1 square minus 0 plus again x equal to 1 upper limit minus lower limit so x is 1 so 1 by 2 minus 1 plus i 1 by 3 minus everywhere x equal to 0 means 0 if we simplify that is a minus i by 2 plus 1 by 2 minus 1 plus i 1 by 3 so what is the real part here terms not containing i it is 1 by 2 minus 1 it is a minus half if we take a imaginary part so i am getting here minus 1 by 2 plus 1 by 3 and that is equal to plus i in bracket minus 1 by 6 so you can simplify so i am getting here minus half minus i into 1 by 6 which is your required answer for the third part now you will get the meaning of these notes the values of integral are different along different path the line integral depends on not only terminal points but also on the paths joining the points so in this case here if path different then value of integral is different now consider the next part contour integral before to that you should know simple closed curve is what a curve is called simple closed curve if it does not process itself and a curve which crosses itself is called multiple curve. you can see by figure that is the first figure is what the simple closed curve and second is a multiple curve because in the first simple closed curve it does not process itself but here it crosses itself so it is multiple curve. also you remember the connected region the region is said to be connected region if any two points of the region r can be connected by a curve which lies entirely within the region r so remember this one also so Cauchy's integral theorem this is very important theorem definitely there will be problems on this Cauchy's integral theorems so statement is what if f of z is an analytic function and f dash z is continuous at each point within and on the simple closed curve then integration over c f of z dz equal to 0 it means that if f of z is analytic and derivative is continuous at each point within and on simple closed curve c then this value equal to 0 now here is one Cauchy's integral formula if f of z is analytic within and on the simple closed curve over c and a is any point within c it means that suppose this is the your c and this is one point a then the value of f of a equal to 1 upon 2 pi i integration over c f of z upon z minus a dz the same thing i can remember as integration over c f of z upon z minus a dz equal to 2 pi i f of a the same statement i can write as if f of z is analytic except z equal to a then f of z upon z minus a dz integration over c that is equal to 2 pi i f of a so i can extend this by Cauchy's integral formula we have 2 pi i upon n factorial n the derivative of f of a 
that is equal to integration over c f of z upon z minus a raised to n plus 1 dz or same thing I can write as integration over c means contour integration over c f of z upon z minus a raised to n means same thing here that is f of z is analytic except z equal to a then what is the power here z minus a raised to n so in this case it is a 2 pi i upon 1 less factorial means n minus 1 factorial and 1 less derivative so what is the power here n so 1 less means n minus 1 1 the derivative so n minus 1 the derivative of f of it. so remember this thing as a formula note that mod of z plus a plus i b equal to r gives circle with center minus a minus b so you can remember like that if we cut this z so what is the real part here a what is imaginary b take a opposite sign and this is center and radius is this for example if z plus 2 plus 3r equal to 1 so what is the center so this is the circle with center minus 2 minus 3 and radius is 1 also if we consider z plus i equal to 2 so what is the real part of this if we cut this z what is the real it is 0 what is imaginary it is 1 take a opposite sign so I am getting here minus 1 so 0 minus 1 is the center and what is the radius it is the 2 also you remember when the point slides outside the circle then use this one because this in that particular curve c it is analytic if that a is outside then use this Cauchy's integral theorem consider the example on Cauchy's integral formula integration over c sin square z upon z minus pi by 6 whole cube dz where c is the circle mod of z equal to 1 so solution i integral integration over c sin square z upon z minus pi by 6 whole cube dz where c is a circle mod of z equal to 1 so it means that it is a circle with the radius 1 and center at 0 0 so here is the circle with center at 0 0 and radius is a and that is why it is 1 comma 0 it is x axis this is y axis here z equal to pi by 6 is a singular point so whether it is inside or outside so pi by 6 means what so actually z equal to pi by 6 means this value equal to by calculator you can find 0 0.52 something so that is means it is inside the circle okay so z equal to pi by 6 is a singular point within c and therefore therefore by Cauchy's integral formula integration over c f of z upon z minus a raised to n dz equal to 2 pi i upon n minus 1 factorial and n minus 1 the derivative of f of a so if we compare this two so what is value of a here it is pi by 6 what is value of n it is a 3 and therefore I am getting here integration over c sin square z upon z minus pi by 6 cube dz equal to 2 pi i upon 2 factorial and the second derivative at pi by 6 this is equation number 1 note that here what is f of z if we compare I am getting here sin square z what is a a equal to pi by 6 and n equal to 3 and therefore we want f double dash of z what is the first derivative so f dash of z equal to 2 sin z into cos z it means that it is a sin 2z it is a first derivative we want second derivative so next derivative will be f double dash of z it is a 2 cos 2z and therefore we want f double dash of pi by 6 so z equal to pi by 6 so cos 2 into pi by 6 it means that 2 into cos pi by 3 so f double dash of pi by 6 since standard value cos pi by 3 equal to 1 by 2 so therefore f double dash of pi by 6 equal to 2 into 1 by 2 means that is equal to 1 substitute this value in equation 1 therefore we get here integration over c sin square z upon z minus pi by 6 cube 
dz equal to 2 pi i upon 2 factorial means 2 into 1. So, what is your final answer? So, your final answer is integration over c sin square z upon z minus pi by 6 cube dz equal to 2 to get cancelled. It is a pi i which is your required answer. Consider the another example on the Pauchy's integral formula that integration over c e raised to 2z upon z minus 1 z minus 2 dz where c is the circle mod of z equal to 3. So, solution consider the integral that is i i equal to integration over c e raised to 2z upon z minus 1 into z minus 2 dz where c is a circle mod of z equal to 3. Draw the figure here the circle. So, here mod of z equal to 3 means center at 0 0. So, radius is 3 means this point is 3 0 and you observe that here z equal to 1 and 2 are singular points within C. As we know the Cauchy's integral formula is what f of z upon z minus a means there is a one point inside. So, here two points. So, first we have to separate it. How? By partial fraction means what? If we see here e raised to 2z upon z minus 1 z minus 2 that is equal to e raised to 2z in bracket 1 upon z minus 1 z minus 2. So, by formula or you can use your partial fraction, but here simple I can use direct formula that is 1 upon x minus a into x minus b that is equal to 1 upon x minus a minus 1 upon x minus b and outside 1 upon a minus b and therefore e raised to 2z upon z minus 1 z minus 2 that is equal to e raised to 2z 1 upon 2 minus 1 in bracket 1 upon z minus 2 minus 1 upon z minus 1. So, finally that is equal to it is a e raised to 2z upon z minus 2 minus e raised to 2z upon z minus 1. So, therefore, this integral given integral becomes now same thing I can write as e raised to 2z upon z minus 2 minus e raised to 2z upon z minus 1 dz. So, I can separate it. So, i equal to integration over c e raised to 2z upon z minus 2 dz minus integration over c e raised to 2z upon z minus 1 dz. So, both points that is z equal to 2 and z equal to 1 both are inside this c. So, here is the curve c and both are inside c. Therefore, by Cauchy's integral formula as we know integration over c f of z upon z minus a dz equal to 2 pi i into f of a. Using this formula, I am getting i, i equal to integration over c e raised to 2z upon z minus 2 dz minus integration over c e raised to 2z upon z minus 1 dz equal to 2 pi i f of 2 minus 2 pi i f of 1. In the same value, I can write 2 pi i common and inside f of 2 minus f of 1. So, this is equation number 1. So, what is f of z here? If we compare this part with this one. So, f of z equal to e raised to 2z and therefore, what is f of 2? e raised to 2 into 2 z equal to 2. So, e raised to 4 and what is f of 1? It is e raised to 2 into 1 means e square. Substitute these values in equation 1. So, what we get here? We get i equal to 2 pi i in bracket e raised to 4 minus e square. So, what is i? i equal to integration over c e raised to 2z upon z minus 1 z minus 2 dz that is equal to 2 pi i in bracket e raised to 4 minus e square which is your final answer. Taylor series. If f of z is analytic everywhere inside a circle C with center z equal to a and radius r, then each point 
inside C is f of z. We can express as f of z equal to f of a plus f dash of a upon 1 factorial z minus a plus f double dash of a upon 2 factorial z minus a square plus f triple dash of a upon 3 factorial z minus a cube plus and so on. That is the power series converges to f of z when mod of z minus a is less than r. Note that here r is radius. This is known as Taylor series of f of z about z equal to a. Also you remember here Lorentz series. If f of z is analytic inside and on the boundary of the ring set region r bounded by two concentric circles c1 and c2 with center at a and respective radii r1 and r2 where r1 is greater than r2 at each point z in r then f of z can be represented by f of z equal to a0 plus a1 z minus a plus a2 z minus a square plus dot 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 plus a minus 1 z minus a raised to minus 1 plus a minus 2 z minus a raised to minus 2 plus dot dot dot. It means that all positive and negative powers of z minus a with this suffix. So, same thing I can express as in the form of summation. At summation n varies from 0 to infinity a n z minus a raised to n plus summation n varies from 1 to infinity a suffix here minus n z minus a raised to minus n is called power series in z minus a. So, this is the Lorentz series, note that. In the Lorentz series, series consisting the power, positive powers of z equal to z0 or maybe the a is called analytic part or Taylor's part of the Lorentz series. How? If we consider the positive side, so you can consider here also z minus a, z minus a square, z minus a cube similarly here. And that is why this positive power is called analytic part or Taylor part of the Lorentz series. Series consisting of negative powers of z equal to z0 is called principal part of Lorentz series. Means this part is known as principal part of the Lorentz series, where a n equal to 1 upon 2 pi i integration over c f of z upon z minus a raised to n plus 1 dz, where n equal to 0, 1, 2, dot, dot, dot. Same value you can put up for a suffix minus n equal to 1 upon 2 pi i integration over c f of z upon z minus a raised to n plus 1. But here values of n from 1, 2, 3 like that. The part summation n varies from 0 to infinity a n z minus a raised to n of the Lorentz series that we already know that is the Taylor's part and the part where the negative powers of z minus a is called principal part of f of z. In the Lorentz series, you remember that f of z is not analytic inside C1. But if f of z is analytic inside C1, coefficients of this negative powers, that is the a suffix minus n equal to 0 and a n equal to nth derivative of f of a upon n factorial. And this series, Lorentz series converted or reduces to Taylor series. Now consider the residues. So before to start the residues, you should know what is the singular point. A point at which a function f of z is not analytic is called singular point. For example, if f of z equal to 1 upon z minus a, in this case, when this becomes 0, when z equal to a, it means that when we put z equal to a, it becomes 0 and that is a singular point because that point, at that point, function is not analytic. Now, isolated singularity. If z equal to a is a singularity of f of z, and if there is no other singularity within a small circle surrounding the point z equal to a, then z equal to a is called isolated singularity of f of z. Otherwise, it is called non-isolated singularity. You remember the example f of z equal to 1 upon z minus 1, z minus 3 has two isolated singularities. How to find z minus 1 equal to 0 implies z equal to 1. Similarly, z equal to 3 are two isolated singularities. For non-isolated singularity, if we consider the example f of z equal to 1 upon sin pi by z, this function is not analytic at this denominator means sin pi by z equal to 0 and by this I can find here pi by z equal to sin inverse 0 and that is equal to n pi and this implies that what is the z? It is 1 by n and n is equal to 1, 2, 3, dot, dot, dot up to infinity. Thus, z equal to 1, 1 by 2, 1 by 3, dot, dot, dot are the points of singularities 
So z equal to zero is a non-isolated singularity because there are infinite number of singularities, just like n equal to one, one by two, one by three, dot dot dot, in the neighborhood of z equal to zero. You also remember here the essential singularities. If the number of negative powers of z minus a in Lorentz series are infinite, then z equal to a is called essential singularity. Or you can say that if f of z is infinite at z equal to a, then z equal to a is an essential singularity. For example, f of z equal to e raised to one by z. You know the expansion of e raised to z or e raised to x. That by using that one plus one by z plus one by two factorial z square. So negative powers here up to the infinity, and that is why as z tends to a, f of z is infinite. Or you can say that is the number of negative powers. Of z minus a in the Lorentz series are infinite here. Then here, this is one of the example of essential singularity. Similarly, f of z equal to sine one upon z minus a has infinite number of terms in negative powers of z minus a. Now also remember removable similarity that if the principal part of the Lorentz series of f of z at z equal to a is zero, it means that negative powers are absent here. Then z equal to a is called removable. Singularities, or you can say the a singularity z equal to a is called removable singularity of f of z if limit z tends to a f of z exists or it is a finite. For example, f of z equal to sine z minus a upon z minus a. So one upon z minus a, you know the expansion of z minus a is this one, and if we multiply with z minus a, so only we'll get here positive powers. Even though if we take the limit z tends to a. f of z is finite similarly f of z equal to e raised to z minus 1 upon z has a removable singularity at z equal to 0 now the pole this is very important to find to solve the examples on residues the principal part of lorentz series contains a finite number of terms if the series a suffix minus 1 z minus a raised to minus 1 plus a minus 2 z minus a raised to minus 2 plus dot 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 a Suffix minus n z minus a raised to minus n consists finite number of term. Then z equal to a is called pole of order n of the function f of z. Simple pole. If the principal part of Lorentz series contains only a suffix minus one z minus a raised to minus one, then z equal to a is called simple pole. When that is when n equal to one, then z equal to a is simple pole. For example, f of z equal to e raised to z upon z into Z minus one square. So in this example, z equal to zero is a simple pole. You can see here z minus zero. What is the power here? One. It means that it has a simple pole at z equal to zero. And what is the power of z minus one? It is the two. So at z equal to one, the power of z has a pole of order two. Now the residue means what? In the Lorentz series, the coefficient of one upon z minus a. That is a A suffix minus one is called residue of f of z at z equal to a. So how to calculate this residues? So you remember here if f of z has simple pole, means what is the order of that? It is one at z equal to a. Then residue of f of a that is equal to limit z tends to a z minus a into f of z that is equal to z minus a into f of z at z equal to a. So for example. If we consider f of z equal to e raised to z upon z minus one, it means that it has a simple pole at z equal to one because power of this it is one, so it has a simple pole. So how to find residue at z equal to one? So that is equal to you take z minus one multiply with that function and you put that is z equal to one. So this cancel. Now I am getting here z equal to one means e raised to one means simply e is a residue at f of one. It means that actually by this I am getting zero when I am putting z equal to one. So you cut this. It means that multiply means you cut this. So at remaining part you put z equal to one to find residue at z equal to one. So if f of z has a pole of order n is greater than one, if it is not simple pole, then At z equal to a, then residue of f of a that is equal to limit z tends to a one upon n minus one factorial. Note that here the order is n. So here one upon n minus one factorial. 
and n minus 1 the derivative with respect to z of what z minus a raised to n into f of z and that is equal to one can write 1 upon n minus 1 factorial into n minus 1 the derivative of z minus a raised to n into f of z and then put z equal to a in the result. For example, if we consider here f of z equal to e raised to z upon z minus 1 q. So, what is the order of pole here? 3. So, it means that by this formula, it is 3 means 2 factorial and the second derivative with respect to z of what you multiply with z minus 1 q with that function. So, note that where I am getting at z equal to 1. So, I want to find residue at a means residue at 1. So, that part I am going to cancel here and remaining thing I am taking here if order is n, here order is 3. So, one less derivative means second derivative of remaining part and you put z equal to 1 there. In the examples, it will clear, do not worry. If z equal to a is a simple pole of f of z, where f of z in the form of phi of z upon psi of z, for example, f of z equal to sin z upon cos z, like that function, where phi of a equal not equal to 0, this numerator is not equal to 0 at a, but psi of a equal to 0, then residue of f of a equal to phi of z upon psi dash z, where psi dash of a is not equal to 0. So, by this we can calculate the residues of the function f of z at pole. Now, Cauchy's residue theorem. What is the statement of it? If f of z is analytic function within and on the simple closed curve C, except at finite number of similar points a1, a2, a3, dot, 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 an inside C, then integration over C f of z dz equal to 2 pi i residue of f of a1 plus residue of f of a2 plus dot 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 residue of f of an. In short, I can write that is equal to 2 pi i into sum of residues at singular points a1, a2, a3 dot 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 an. So, you can see by the figure that f of z is analytic function within and on the closed curve c and here a1, a2 dot 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 this an are the singular points inside c. Then this formula we can use that is the integration over c f of z dz that is equal to 2 pi i into sum of the residues at singular points within c. You remember there if the pole lies outside the given closed curve c then use Cauchy's integral theorem. If the pole at z equal to a lies inside c then use Cauchy's integral formula or Cauchy's residue theorem. If there are finite number of poles a1, a2 at z equal to a1, a2, a3 dot 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 an lies inside c. Then use Cauchy's residue theorem. It means that the number of points, number of singular points, then use Cauchy's residue theorem. Because as compared to Cauchy's integral formula, this Cauchy's residue theorem is easy to find integration over c of that function. And to use this Cauchy's residue theorem, you find residues according to pole, which is simple or pole of order. N. Consider one example on residue theorem. So, evaluate integration over c cos of pi z square z minus 1 z minus 2. This problem also we can solve by Cauchy's integral formula, but here we have to do again the by partial fraction. You have to separate it these two points and then we have to solve. But in residue theorem, we can solve directly. How? Let us see. So, solution consider i equal to integration over c cos of pi z square upon z minus 1 z minus 2 dz. Here what is c? c is a mod of z equal to 3. It means that it is a circle with radius 3 and center at 0, 0. So, here you can consider this circle center at 0, 0 and radius 3. That is why this point is 3, 0. So, now z equal to 1, z equal to 2. Both points inside. So, that is why here z equal to 1 and 2 are the singular point within C and therefore, by residue theorem, integration over C f of z dz that is equal to 2 pi i into sum of the residues at singular points within C. So, how many points within C here? That is 2 points and therefore, I am getting here integration over C 
cos of pi z square upon z minus 1 z minus 2 dz that is equal to 2 pi i in bracket residue at first point that is f of 1 plus residue at 2. So, this is equation number 1. We want to find residue at 1 and residue at 2. So, what is f of z here? If we compare it is f of z is pi cos of pi z square upon z minus 1 z minus 2. So, residue at z equal to 1. So, f of z has a pole, has a simple pole because here power of this z minus 1 is 1. It means that of order 1. So, f of z has a simple pole at z equal to 1 and therefore by the formula residue at 1 that is equal to z minus 1 into f of z at z equal to 1. So, what is z minus 1 into f of z means? z minus 1, what is f of z? Cos of pi z square upon z minus 1 into z minus 2 at z equal to 1. So, simplify it. So, I am getting here. It is a cos of pi z square upon z minus 2 at z equal to 1. So, that is equal to note here that z minus 1 and z minus 1 cancel. So, cos of pi z value is 1 upon 1 minus 2 and that is cos pi is minus 1 upon minus 1 and therefore, I am getting here residue at 1 equal to 1. Now, residue at second singular point z equal to 2. So, we can write that at z equal to 2, f of z, you can observe this is f of z, z equal to 2, as what is the pole of order 1. So, it is a simple pole there. So, I can write here at z equal to 2, f of z, has simple pole and therefore by the formula residue at f of 2 that is equal to z minus 2 into f of z. What is f of z here? That is a z minus 2 into f of z means cos of pi z square upon z minus 1 z minus 2 at z equal to 2 now. Note that here we want to find z equal to 2 residue at z equal to 2. So, I am getting here cos of pi z square upon z minus 1 at z equal to 2 and that is equal to if we put here cos of pi z square means 2 square upon 2 minus 1. So, cos of 4 pi upon 1. What is cos 4 pi? It is 1 upon 1. So, again residue at f of 2 also 1. So, both residue values you substitute in equation 1. So, substitute these values, which values residue at f of 1 and residue at 2. In equation 1, we get integration over c cos of pi z square upon z minus 1 z minus 2 dz equal to 2 pi i residue at 1 plus residue at 2. So, I am getting here 2 pi i into 2 that is a 4 pi i. So, finally, I am getting here integration over c cos of pi z square upon z minus 1 z minus 2 dz and that is equal to 4 pi i which is your required value.